అందరికీ నమస్కారం ఇవాళ మనం ఏటీఎల్ వే టు ఇన్నోవేషన్ నిర్మాణ ప్రోగ్రామ్ కి స్వాగతం సుస్వాగతం అందరికి కూడా ఈ ప్రోగ్రామ్ లో మరి మనం సెన్సార్స్ మరియు వాటి యొక్క ఇంటర్ఫేసింగ్ విత్ ఆర్టినో సో ఏ విధంగా ఉంటుంది ఏంటనేది మనం తెలుసుకుందాం తెలుసుకోబోయే ముందు మనకి ఈ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ని సమర్పిస్తున్న వారు గవర్నమెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ స్కూల్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ సమగ్ర శిక్ష ఎస్సీఆర్టి యూనిసెఫ్ మరియు విజ్ఞానాశ్రమ్ అందరూ కూడా ఏటీఎల్ మ్యారథాన్ పార్టిసిపేట్ చేయండి విలువైన బహుమతులు గెలవండి మీ స్కూల్ కి మీ కంట్రీకి మీ స్టేట్ కి మంచి పేరు తీసుకురండి ఇవాళ మన సెషన్ ని మా ఎలక్ట్రికల్ అండ్ సారీ మా ఎలక్ట్రానిక్స్ ఇంజనీర్ అండ్ మై కోడింగ్ కొలీగ్ పీపుల్ విల్ టేక్స్ ద సెషన్ టుడే సో అందరూ కూడా తన యొక్క సజెషన్స్ ని ఫాలో అవ్వండి కోడింగ్ లో మరింత డెప్త్ నేర్చుకోవచ్చు ఓవర్ టు యూ పీపుల్ so before starting to the session there is one reminder reminder regarding atel marathon so the last date of submitting your ideas is the 10th april so hardly there is a 15 days are left for competition so some queries i have received that the person some in charge is asking for whether they can apply the apply for competition in their regional language so the answer is no so if you have to uh, attend the, the competition then only in the english or hindi there are only two options for filling the ideas okay uh, yeah so today's objective is the let's go to the atel curriculum and inside that there we are going to learn the different types of sensor and their applications and somewhat coding regarding that particular sensors so inside the sensors we are going to take care, take care of in the last session we have covered only three kind of sensors so in the today's session i will going to introduce about a uh, varieties of sensor so there will be very less part of coding will, will be there so i just it will be just a introductory session to the all kind of sensors okay so at all curriculum just you have to go to this add uh, this site for www.aim.gov.in just open up the browser just type this is the type aim aim.gov.in after clicking on this the interface will be displayed like this so just you have to go on the aim initiatives and atel tinkering lab after that you can able to see the some drop down menus over here so over here you have to go on the atel curriculum so for the link for this uh for the link for this page is already given in the youtube description you can kindly check it afterwards so after that just go on the understanding of sensors and actuator presentation okay just click on this After that it will ask you for downloading just download and after that just just go and find out where that is stored one so understanding sensors and actuator so what are the sensors and actuators so sensor is an electronic component which purpose which whose purpose is to detect events or changes so what does mean by the events and changes so it can be anything environmental physical changes like if there is a water in the tank you can detect that is the physical state no that we are that is event that we are observing such a kind of events will be there so as you can see in this image there is one sensor it looks like some kind of temperature sensor what it does it just detects the environmental temperature that is observing the events whatever is happening in the environment so that is nothing but a one kind of sensor okay so it just observing the changes whatever is happening in the environment regarding with the temperature so what is actuator actuators are basically things that produce an action okay it just an uh, so let's observe carefully this is one sensor called as temperature sensor what it does is observing the environment and it just reading the uh, 
is sensing the temperature so what it does there will be one uh, second thing human or software so what is it uh, software we can imagine it as like our, our adeno controller so what we are doing we are storing some value uh, we are getting this value in our controller so what we do suppose the temperature is crossing 30 degrees celsius then we are just turning on our actuator actuator is nothing but a our ac actuators can be anything like fan tube light dc motors ac any kind of devices that for, for that we are just telling them something that now you have to operate that can be an actuator so sensor which can observe the environmental changes or events and actuator just produce an action and influences now suppose 30 degree celsius we have set in our port if the 30 degree celsius is crossing then we have to turn on the ac and again by the influences with this if we turn on the ac again the temperature will decrease this feedback will get back to the sensor and sensor will again give that this feedback to the software okay so this feedback is there so let's say what are the different types of sensor that we have in our lab and we are going to use so first we'll use the potentiometer a potentiometer informally a pod a three terminal resistor sliding contact that forms an adjustable voltage divider so potentiometer is we know that okay it has it is it's having one uh, rotary rotary knob we can uh, rotate this and by rotating this the resistor's value of this potentiometer is get varies and what we are doing we are connecting one leg to the 5 volt uh, supply terminal one new leg to the ground and if we rotate this knob by it will change the resistor and by changing the resistor at this terminal we can able to get the variable voltage so we are getting five we are connecting five volt and lower limit is ground zero volt is there no so if we rotating the knob then from zero volt to five volt range we can able to get all the sensors mostly work like that only suppose we take the example of ldr sensor and we are connecting 5 volt on that one terminal and ground on another terminal and depend on the light this register value is changes and we are getting the corresponding output voltages similar like this potentiometer if the potentiometer is at low then it will give the zero volt similarly for ldr sensor if the, there is no light then voltage will give as the zero similarly like that so suppose in the coding if you do want to trace the ldr sensor but you don't have the ldr sensor for now you can simply use the potentiometer for the testing purposes okay so next sensor is what is this this is one ldr sensor uh, in the last session we have already talked about this uh, ldr sensor so what is this sensor it is one kind of light dependent resistor whose resistance is get vary according with the light fall on this uh, orange color object this is called as an ldr component and this is called as module we can control the resistance value of this uh, ldr by using this potentiometer is there okay so where we can use this ldr sensor actually so we have seen many applications like street lights okay so if uh, it detecting light no so if we keep it in the environment it detects in the sunlight if the sunlight is there it will uh, connect it to a one bulb if the sunlight is there that bulb will be off if automatically if the sun falls down and night will occur at that time ldr is detecting no light so at that time we are just turning on that bulb we can use such a kind of application with using this ldr but see can we detect only sunlight from this can't we detect the room the room tube lights bulbs and all other torches or things? can we detect that things with this ldr yes we can detect so just uh, think about some another ways just uh, doing the street light project you can do for something more than this on this ldr project so what you can do uh, just i'll give you one example uh, in your school suppose you have 40 rooms in the 40 rooms you have in each room you have two two lights so all like total for 82 lights will be there so can we put this ldr sensor on the each tube light for that so either so we can able to detect the lights from that tube light and can we make one some uh, main display which can place on some ground or something like that uh, that area is visible to all the spectators so what we can do uh, we can on that display we can able to say that uh, in the 
in your school there will be 80 tubelets are there among that 70 tubelets are currently on even though the sunlight is there okay even the sunlight is there we are turning on the 70 tubelets so everyone will be able to see that so that will what will affect that so automatically that uh, that individual person will get to know that we are wasting a lot of energy by turning on that tubelet so automatically that person what will do it will try to turn off that tubelets so that whenever it uh, turn off the tubelet we can able to get the count on that, that main display so automatically our power consumption will get reduced your energy is get little bit amount of energy will be saved so we are we can be used, this sensor can be used in such a kind of application there will be one entire system we are actually focusing on the energy problems and giving the solution by using this simple ldr sensor okay so let's see the next sensor the force sensitive sensor okay so what is it this sensor is a basically force sensitive resistor is commonly used in application where we need to measure how hard something is pressed or squeezed so what does it mean in this image is not clearly what we can do we'll just uh, open up the tinkercad just go on the tinkercad so here is my tab is open so i am going on the tinkercad circuits i'm creating one design So just go select all and what is that sensor is called force sensor just simply type force and this sensor will be displayed okay this will looks like this it has some conductive material is placed on this and below that there is one there will be one resistive material will be there so whenever we are pressing this sensor with some force that resistance across this material will get varied and we can able to see that difference so how we can see we can take multimeter now we can take one leg one head so if we start that simulation now we will clean you can see 0, 0.0 newton so force is measured in newton so newton is different so if i increase this oh sorry we are measuring resistor no so we have to keep this in the register mode so instead of voltage we have to keep it on the register and just start simulation so see if you click if we vary the pressure if you applying pressure on this sensor the register value is getting increased okay we can use this on our controller we can just we just have to connect a, one analog pin to this one sensor and we can able to get some values and we can use this value to uh, do uh, perform any action for if you see the modern cars modern cars uh, the this sensor is already present whoever is driving the car we need that the, on the seat this sensor is already placed to detect that uh, whether that person is seated sit, uh, seated on this sensor uh, seat or not so what will happen suppose that person is entered in the car and is seated on the seat the his weight will generate some produce uh, force on this sensor so that uh, that force is get uh, noted by the controller and what will what will do the action now we will check whether he, that person is putted their seat belt on this car or not so if the person is detected now we are checking whether he connected the seat belt or not if it's not connected then we will put some alarm in the car that indicating that you have to wear your seat belt when you are driving the car okay so this one kind of application you can generate so any application you can uh, think of that requires the some force sensing okay similarly flex sensor flex sensor is used to measure how much something is bending basically this sensor can be used for gesture recognition which can be applied in the variety of ways they can also be used to control intensity of something for example the brightness of led and the speed of decimeter so this is one kind of flex sensor similarly what i tell you if, uh, these are the force sensor if we apply some force on that the resistance of this force sensor is get varies similarly flex sensor is also there so if we bend that flex sensor the resistance value get changed how you can simply check like this only 
So instead of that, we will just simply type flex. So flex sensor will looks like this. It consisting of carbon material is placed inside it and some conductor, conductor material is there. So we will take another one multimeter. And we'll put it on the register mode. Uh, this register thing doesn't have polarity, so you can connect anyhow, positive to negative. So it does, a register doesn't have any polarity. This is, it is the one kind of variable register, right? So currently it's showing some 30 kilo ohms value. So if I click on this and I'm now 70 degrees get tilted. Now if I change in, try to build bend this, then register value is changing. Okay. I'll just show you how we're going to use in our Arduino later on. Yeah. So just take care, uh, just make a note of this, which sensors we are learning and we'll see how we are going to use. So these are the flex sensor. It just measuring whether it is bent or not. Now think about some applications like uh, if you have door, if you are opening and closing the door, can we place that flex sensor in such a way that if we are closing the door, that flex sensor will get uh, bended. And if we release the, if you open the door, that flex sensor will get opened so that we can able to detect the movement of doors in any aspects, like wherever the bending is needed, we can use this sensor in such a kind of application. Now in the current world, mostly the gesture control gaming are there. So some people you have seen, they are wearing the VR box and putting some gloves on in their hands. That uses the flex sensor. If they are uh, making their hand as a punch, then automatically that, that robot will make their punch. So it's nothing but a gesture control. So we will put some flex sensor on our hand, five sensor on our five fingers. If we make it one, we can assign it for some operation. Suppose we are making one robotic car. If we put it as one, then we will say in our code, if we play, I am making the gesture as a one, then move forward. If I'm making two, then move left. Something like that action we can do with this kind of flex sensors. And there are applications of flex sensor and force sensors are enor enormous. There are a lot many applications are there. Just we have to think in that way. So air and water flow sensor. So what is this? This sensor sits an inline water. It is basically measuring the flow, whether the if you connect it on the some system uh, in on the pipes of our tank and we just start, uh, started our tank, uh, sorry, tap, then water will start flowing from it. So from how much force that water is coming, this kind of information we can able to get and how much amount of water with what velocity it's coming and how much water we can we have utilized. This kind of information we can able to get with this water flow sensor. It's not only applicable for water, it, we can just simply flow the air on it. So this there, there is one fan, you can able to see the fan is over here. No? So whenever the water and air will uh, going from these pipes, this will start rotating. So what will happen? There is one rotor inside it, inside it. So what that rotor will do when water is coming, this fan is getting started moving. Also the inside rotor will also start moving. So that rotor is connected to Hall effect sensor. What is Hall effect sensor? Hall effect sensor is used to read the magnetic fields. So, so whenever the current is flowing through that and the rotor is moving, so what happened? The magnetic field is getting generated. So depending on how much fast this fan is moving, how much slow this fan is moving, depending on that, the magnetic field may vary. And that magnetic field will be related by this Hall effect sensor and this uh, whatever this uh, information is reading, it's giving back this information to our controller in the form of pulses. Pulses in time but a voltage. So we can able to get the data like how much water we have wasted. Suppose uh, in tank you have connected in the one day you can actually able to get how much water you have utilized in one day or one month or something like that and with what pressure the water is coming like and like kind of that projects you can make with this uh, water flow sensor. So it uses magnetic Hall effect and uh, phenomena. Yeah, Hall effect phenomena is nothing but a, it's measuring magnetic fields generated by any conductor. Okay. So similarly, 
uh, snake sensor is water level sensor you might be familiar with this sensor what it does it just simply measures the level of water so as you can see on this red portion there is one some straight line conductors are there conductor is nothing but a one kind of wire so if we place this sensor inside of some glass of water then how much this sensor is dipped inside it depending on that we will able to get some values so we can say that whether the glass is completely full it is partially filled or it is empty just by dipping this sensor inside it how it works so suppose now water level is this much now make a, this sensor is vertical and water level is this much now our i don't know what it does it just taking a look how much this conductor is dipped inside the water and we'll able to get the information in the form of analog values so we'll just decode that analog values and make in the form of percentage suppose we are getting the well, analog values in the form of 0 to 1000 so if the value 0 is coming then we can say the our water jar is empty if it's showing 500 value then we can say it's 50 percent filled like that we can use it so can we create our own water level sensor so yes we can generate our own water level sensor just we have to increase the length of these conductor wires uh, we can use just simply to read the bore well water level so we have the bore wells in our villages no? so we don't know how much water is filled inside that bore well so for detecting that we can just simply put some conductors and throw it inside the water and we'll just have to connect some controller so that we can able to get some values in the controller and we'll able to get the how much water is filled inside that well okay so what happens exactly how the principle of that let me see let's see the sensor work on the principle of the conduction so when the sensor is immersed in the water or any other conducting liquid the resistance of sensor changes this turn the produce the analog voltage analog voltage signal which dependent on the level of water so suppose water is depth this much so what uh, this water conducts can current flow through the water yes it will conduct the water conducts so when the water is for is there from this uh, connections so this this all the conductor is get shorted with each other so ultimately total effective resistor value is get decreased so how much resistor value is going to decrease or increase depending on that we can able to get the how much uh, what, uh, values of analog values and we can able to get the how much water is filled in the tank okay. so it depends on the principle of the conduction similarly rain drop uh, uh, rain water sensor we use the same principle as you can see these are the sensor has some uh, network made on this right this is also one conductive material so suppose one raindrop is fall on this object on this mesh so there are two legs are connected with each other they, uh, they get shorted because of that water drop so the effective resistor of all this network is get reduced so if the more water is fall on that that object uh, on this surface the automatically the effective total effective resistor will completely get decreased so we can say the rain is coming it's very little or it's very far it's more or it's thunderstorm is coming by by this how much is get dipped inside that water droplets by with that we can able to say how much rain is coming okay soil moisture sensor it works on the all the three sensors works on the phenomenon of conduction this sensor is also works same so if you put inside the soil the how much moisture is there uh, this loop is uh, able to detecting depend on that the analog value gets varies and depending on that we can able to see how, whether the uh, soil is com get completely dry or it's get completely wet we can able to get the values with that okay. so mq uh, mq gas sensor what is this mq gas sensor mq gas sensor are the family of sensor which are used to detect wide varieties of gases like alcohol smoke methane lpg hydrogen uh, nh3 that is ammonia uh, benzene propane etc they are widely used in the homes and industries as an alarm system and detector now see what uh, this sensor can able to detect the varieties of gases like smoke methane lpg lpg is nothing but our normal cylinder gases are there no? so if these gases 
are leakaging then this sensor we can connect on on that system so that uh, this sensor will detect that gases and able to generate some logic so we can turn on the buzzer if the gas is detected just turn on the buzzer so we will take the necessary action on this lpg now uh, on this system okay with this uh, we will turn off the knob of this lpg okay so similarly so in your school you have the chemistry labs are there no? so inside that lab you have the lot many experiments like generating ammonia generating hydrogen and uh, there we are using the gas burners as also there so there are very much high chances of getting accident by because of that gases right so you can place this sensor over there so some of the teachers were asking can we put this electronics uh, sensors and all this electronics world into their subjects like chemistry physics can we use this sensors in the chemistry can we use the sensors in the physics so yes we can use this kind of sensors uh, in the chemistry and chemistry so see so this sensor can able to generate ammonia so we are doing some uh, experiments in the chemistry to generate uh, mixing some chemicals and generating some ammonia so can we play can we place the sensor over there so we can able to get that ammonia is get generated so we can use in such kind of applications okay so similarly okay next is the barometric pressure sensor what is this sensor the sensor can measure the temperature and air pressure air pressure is nothing but atmospheric pressure this this sensor is useful to measure the atmospheric pressure and that data can be used to determine the altitude from sea level since we know that the air pressure decreases at height above the sea level increases so imagine the sea at the sea level we have the maximum the uh, maximum atmospheric pressure okay so whenever we are going a little up in the direction the atmospheric pressure will get decreased so if we go on the himalaya achieve the atmospheric pressure on, on that himalaya don't so you can find out the atmospheric pressure is very less on that surface so similarly in our ground our ground is not very uniform no? some somewhere uh, the dicks are there somewhere the mountains were there and uh, somewhere are the roads are there so for each point there will be different atmospheric pressure will be there so this this sensor can able to detect that uh, what is the atmospheric pressure current atmospheric pressure okay this sensor can able to detect the atmospheric pressure but why why it is necessary to detect the uh, atmospheric pressure why it is necessary why we are why we are even doing that so so atmospheric pressure is now uh, can we can predict the weather by uh, by watching at the atmospheric pressure readings so if the atmospheric pressure readings are drastically get down then we can able to sense the there will be the cloud a uh, cloudy environment will be there rainy uh, rain may fall the thunders will get started that will lead to lead down the atmospheric pressure so this kind of sensor can give you the short term analysis regarding the weather a broadcasting regarding the weather you can say okay we can use in that way so next sensor it is the humidity and temperature sensor it is the sensor that gives digital values of the temperature and humidity with a good accuracy it consisting of capacity humidity sensor thermistor and microchip that takes analog analog data and converts it to digital form so see in your lab you can able to see the sensors like this this is the dst22 sensor and similarly like that there will be blue color sensor is also there that is called as dht11 so what it does it just simply measure the relative humidity inside the air and the temperature for measuring the temperature we are using the thermistor inside it uh, if you remove this white casing you can able to see there will be black color ltc temperature sensor will be there that can able to detect the temperature and uh, uh, besides that there will be one uh, humidity sensor which is works on the capacity uh, uh, which is the capacity humidity sensor what it does it has two current carry uh, sorry two conductors will be there like capacitor what it does it has two capacitive plates and in, uh, in between that there will be some materials which is sensitive to the humidity like salt or propylene which is uh, sensitive to the humidity no so whenever salt is coming in contact with the moisture it will uh, start some uh, 
making wetness will be there no so salt can able to detect that moisture so same phenomenon is used inside this sensors so where we can use it whenever we want to detect the temperature and humidity for that such applications we can use this kind of sensor okay and again there is a microchip inside that there will be three main components inside this ic uh, this device there will be one thermistor there will be capacity humidity sensor and one is the microchip sensor so these sensors are giving the values in the form of analog values and there is one chip is there inside that that will convert that analog value to the digital value and that digital value we are getting in the adder okay. so next thing is a microphone sensor the microphone inside your mobile phones laptops earphone etc uses this sensor this sensor enable us not only the measure the amount of sound but the frequency and pitch too and its signal is accurate enough to replicate the sound with the good accuracy so see in the mobile phones also we have the microphones this they are using also this kind of sensors over there so what this sensor is there so inside this sensor there will be one diaper diaphragm what the diaphragm is imagine is just like a capacitor there will be two plates and one plate is a flexible so if we talk loudly that uh, that surface will get a little bit bended okay so depending on that bending some capacitance value get may get varied so if i talk loudly that capacitor will flex more so depending on that the capacitor value will get changed and if the capacitor value is get changed the voltage again get changed and that voltage is get read by our adeno okay so we can where we can use uh, this kind of sensor we can use it as a clap sensor we can just use our sound as a one kind of uh, switch so if we just uh, play uh, place one clap we want to turn off the light we can do that if you want to read our sound we can able to do that okay so such a kind of applications we can make with this microphone sensor buzzer model buzzer is one kind of actuator as we are discussing about sensors and actuator all of this above is just detecting some environmental conditions and events they are detecting but what buzzer is doing it just giving some output right it says actuator if some temperature reading is getting down if suppose 30 is getting temperature reading is getting below than 30 degree then we have to play some buzzer so we can able to play the buzzer we can actually able to hear the sound this is one kind of action is there no so that is why it's called as actuator the sound when you turn on the tv on and off the sound of camera click when we take the pictures from mobile phones and sound of beep when you dial the number on the telephone on the, these are the some kind of applications they have mentioned it uses the piezo electricity principle so next thing ultrasonic sensor we have already discussed this ultrasonic sensor previously right so what does it do it just detecting the distance it can able to measure the distances right so where is the distance we want to measure for such applications we can able to use this ultrasonic sensor so how they are using so if we place some ultrasonic sensor over here and there are two eyes you can able to see no one eye is going to transmit some ultrasonic waves and another is receiving when when i keep the hand in front of ultrasonic sensor that waves will ultrasonic waves will come that will hit at my hand and they will get reflected back and this sensor is measuring the time how much time is taking to uh, getting back that signal that is measuring the time and we know the formula of speed speed is nothing but a distance divided by time right so we know the time we know the time and we know the speed of uh, sound waves right so by do, by doing this calculation we can able to get the distance values so wherever the distance is needed we can use in such a kind of application similarly ultrasonic sensor is also uses the same principle there is one ultrasonic led is there and one receiver is there whenever the object is come in between that it will able to detect that thing okay so the sensor has higher transmitter and receiver the mechanism is quite similar to ultrasonic sensor the transmitter sends the pulse of the light and receive the calculated time for taken to light to reflect back so it simply acts as a one wireless switch just imagine a higher sensor is kind of wireless switch the pulse sensor what is the pulse sensor pulse sensor is kind of device which emits the green color light 
okay green color light will be there if the finger is coming to contact this led is always all the time is transmitting the waves in the green color so in our hand in our body there is the part called the hemoglobin hemoglobins are used to carry the bloods right so whenever we are transmitting green color that hemoglobins are absorbing that green color and how much amount of uh, green color is reflected back we can able to get the pulses right so by using this kind of principle we are able to get the pulses so you can use in the medical kind of applications the pulse sensor you can use it in the medical kind of applications pir motion sensor pir motion sensor is also one kind of detecting mechanism like ir sensor ultrasonic sensor it just kind of passive infrared motion sensor what it does it just radiate the infrared waves and it's able to detect the infrared image means they can able to know, uh, sense the infrared thermal thermal movement is there or not if uh, this sensor is radiating some amount of energy some person is walking through that energy that thermal variations will be there the potential difference uh, difference has been generated inside the pir sensor depending on that the sensor is able to get the movement whether that inside the sensor the person is moving or not okay so where we can use this, this kind of sensor suppose in your hall you are watching the tv but you are now just looking at the tv and after some time you got fallen into sleep now your movement is get stop this sensor is detecting your movement whether you are moving or not if you are if you are not moving the sensor will just simply turn off the tv because no one is watching okay so such a kind of applications we can make with this prs sensor where the movement is necessary okay. tricolor tricolor led what is that so we know the our visible spectrum we can able to see the rgb color and the whatever the color is the combination of this rgb color only no? we can form any color with the help of this rgb color right so like this so we have in the schools and in the childhood we have make the water colors we have we can able to create any another color with the mixing of this this color three colors so suppose we if we mix red and blue color we can able to get the purple purple color so similarly that like that in the controller this led will have some kind of rgb values by setting the rgb values combination of this rgb values we can able to make any color from this leds so if you see in the model laptops they have the keyboards they have the multicolor leds on that keyboard some laptop has blue color led some laptops have multiple color leds on such a kind of applications we can make with that like model laptops using this kind of tricolor leds we call it as rgb leds okay similarly laser model in the recent session raju has already explained you about this laser model what it does it just concentrating the amount of light and just transmitting in the one direction so the range of that light will become more rather than normal leds if we put some normal leds on the device it will not going to go for the longer distances so when we can we can use the lasers where we want some long distance ranges okay so recently uh, scientists can able to made such a kind of laser if we are using on the earth we can able to send that kind of light on the moon so such a kind of experiment is already done so laser is that much effective and powerful by the standing on the earth we can able to send that light on the moon okay. so this kind of laser we can make this lasers can be used for uh, cutting uh, there are lot many applications of laser i won't going to cover it that because we have lot many things to cover so this is one lcd display which actually uses one liquid crystal it is one kind of liquid is there that can able to give you the impressions so if you want to print hello so only that much backlight will be given, going to print some information on that black color okay so there this kind of whenever you want to show some information about some sensors on anything information you want to display you can able to display on this display so this is one model you can able to see is some buttons over here right so if you press that button you can able to select actually one one digit by that okay so next thing capacitive touch sensor it is one kind of sensor which can able to detect your touch you can make it our your own sensor so suppose you want to make some applications like someone in a you are using cupboard 
he said that you have, you are putting some jewelry you can make across complete the conductor if someone accidentally touches that one alarm it can be generated you can able to generate some kind of touch sensor by your own this is only small sensor hardware which is using the capacitive uh, phenomenon so similarly led and tap switch it is nothing but a one simple demonstration kit is there if you press the led uh, the led will uh, if you press the switch the led will glow for uh, testing in the adding of coding you can able to use this kind of kit similarly hall current sensor so as we know so whenever the we have the circuit the current is flowing through the circuit right so whenever the current is flowing through any kind of conductor that will generate some magnetic field so this hall current sensor what it does it will read that magnetic fields by the reading that magnetic fields it can able to detect the current how much current is flowing from that so we can able to use this kind of sensors to read the current and we can do some actions on that current whether the current is out we can generate the feedbacks with this current sensor joystick joystick we are aware of that we can make some robotics application with that it just using two kind of potentiometer on the x and y directions if we move this knob next uh, upwards then x x value will get different this will also generate some kind of analog values okay whenever you are moving some different analog values will be generated and in the controller we have to play with that analog values if the values are coming from 10 to 100 then do this action now like that actions has to be generated by using the joysticks we can use in the gaming applications relay model relay model we are aware of it is one kind of electromechanical switch by the it is electronic switch by the detecting any electronic pulses we can able to actually turn on the loads if we connect some fan and here we are connected air sensor if we putting our hand in front of air sensor air sensor is detecting and by the air sensor we can able to turn on this relay like that kind of application we can able to perform with the relay model okay and motor driver sheet so we are using many kind of uh, motors dc motors are there stepper motors are there such a motors we are not able to connect directly to the arduino because I, our arduino will not going to provide that much current that can able to handle that much heavy motors to handle any any heavy motors we have to use this motor driver sheet okay so they are using some darlington pairs there will be not many transistors and heavy circuitry are there that can able to provide the extra current whatever is required for the motors okay so we can use in the, to drive some stepper motors and dc motors we can even able to drive high torque motors that we are using in the humanoid motors okay so same in the servo motor servo motor we are aware of that okay so if we are giving some coding apply some supply this shaft is getting moved with a 360 degree some servo motors are there which can able to go at the 180 degree celsius degrees okay so we can use the servo motors wherever the some amount of degree is needed so similarly like there will be the dc motors you are aware of the dc motors which is using the electromagnetic uh, uh, magnetic phenomenon you can able to use the dc motors where that you know the more, most of the applications where we are going to the dc motors wherever you want to provide some actuators kind of thing on that kind of application you can able to use this kind of dc motors okay so these are some different sets of sensors that we can able to, that we have seen that and i have already explained you some kind of applications by right, how we are going to use that sensors okay so that is from my side okay so yeah so that is from my side so thank you for giving me this opportunity to to explain this kind of information in front of you so thank you for government of andhra pradesh uh, thank you to samagra shiksha the department of school school education unicef scrt and thanks to vidna ashram yeah so just stay tuned for the next session that is from my side yeah. thank you